In today's video I will be constructing a fountain that runs on liquid metal, but not just any metal. This is sodium, an alkali metal that's soft enough to be cut with a knife. And this here is potassium, also an alkali metal and even softer than sodium. Both metals are highly reactive, they ignite upon contact with water and can even explode. Here you can see how a small piece of potassium reacts when I toss it into water. But the real magic happens when these metals come into contact with each other. Individually they are solids, but when mixed they become a liquid. Here you can see the silvery drops of this liquid metal. It's what's known as a eutectic mixture, having a lower melting point than either metal alone. This alloy is extremely reactive and can only be handled under mineral oil or a protective gas like argon. Exposed to air the metal can spontaneously ignite. Watch as a few drops of the metal react upon contact with water and I will be filling about 60 milliliters of it into a fountain that will subsequently spray the metal up to 15 centimeters into the air. The actual fountain was crafted in a previous video with the help of a professional glassblower Johan. If you are interested in that video you will find a link in the video description. I need to construct a base for this beautiful masterpiece. I've used birch plywood and glued the individual pieces together to form a box. Then I drilled holes for the fountain's feet and created an opening for the power supply plug. Once the box was sanded I applied a stain. The darker shade looks much more appealing in my opinion. Finally I sealed the surface with a layer of Rubio Mono coat. Following this I embedded three neodymium magnets into a 3D printed holder. Hold on, it just occurred to me that I haven't explained how the fountain actually works. A regular pump wouldn't suffice. Apart from not fitting into the elegant glass fountain it would likely catch fire once it starts pumping the metal. The fountain's pump consists of two tungsten electrodes melted into the glass on opposite sides along with two magnets. When a current flows between the tungsten electrodes it pumps the metal upward. I will explain the working of this pump in detail at the end of the video. The 3D printed holders allow me to attach the magnets to the base of the fountain. Given the high current requirement of about 40 amperes I've opted to use copper grounding cables. However I needed a way to attach these to the tungsten electrodes. So I cut two pieces of copper from a square rod and created a groove on one side by using a saw. This groove accommodates the flat copper cable and is then compressed to securely fix the cable in place. The copper blocks can then be slid over the tungsten electrodes and secured with a screw. A meanwhile 2.5 volts 40 ampere power supply was used for the power source. Now it's time to fill the fountain with the hazardous metal. But before we do that the inside of the fountain needs to be dried. Even though it doesn't look wet all surfaces have absorbed small amounts of water. This would react with the metal and needs to be removed. I've wrapped the fountain with a heating band and additionally insulated it with aluminum foil. A thermometer will indicate the precise temperature later on. I will connect the fountain to my vacuum pump and evacuate it while heating the fountain to 150 degrees celsius using the heating band. Within one hour this process will remove the water from the walls. Afterward I will switch off the vacuum pump and let argon gas flow through the fountain to prevent air and moisture from re-entering. By using a rubber septum I can seal the top of the fountain while still being able to add the metal using a cannula. The additional needle is to allow the escape of argon gas, otherwise pressure would build up inside. With a syringe a total of 60 milliliters of the sodium potassium alloy was filled into the fountain. And I'm quite dissatisfied with the process. As you can see some mineral oil ended up in the fountain causing the walls to look dirty. Unfortunately it's currently my only way to fill the fountain without the metal oxidizing significantly. A glove box would be the most convenient but even a good schlenk setup would suffice. However at the moment I don't have the space for either. If you would like to support my project so that I can possibly rent an additional space someday consider becoming a patreon. You will also find insights into my ongoing projects there. You can find the link in the video description. And a big thank you to my current patreons. I truly appreciate your support. Once the metal was filled into the fountain, the septum was removed, the fountain was sealed off with a glass stopper and the argon was turned off. It was time to place the fountain on its wooden base. And to power it up. Hmm, not quite how I envisioned it to be honest. 
The issue is that the power supply detects a short circuit, shuts down, and then restarts, hoping the short circuit has been resolved. And to be fair to the power supply, it essentially is a short circuit. The power supply should have enough power, but I would likely incorporate resistors in a third version of this fountain to prevent the power supply from shutting off. For this video, I had to cheat a bit and connect a second power supply in parallel to the one built into the base. This way, the fountain runs continuously. And isn't it beautiful? Okay, like I promised earlier, let's talk about how this pump actually works. It is a pump without any moving parts and it basically follows the same principle as a magnetohydrodynamic propulsion system, which is the same propulsion system used in the movie Hunt for Red October. And the basic principle is the Lorentz force. As you can see, we have these two electrodes here on opposite sides. Right now, there is no way that current can flow because they are separated in the middle. But when this fountain is filled with liquid metal, it bridges the gap and current can flow from one side to the other. This part here represents the left hand rule. As you can see we have I for current, F for the force and B for the magnetic field. And let's align the current with the current that is flowing. And as you can see in a 90 degree angle to this current flowing we have these two magnets here on opposite sides. So this represents the magnetic field which goes this way. And as you can see we then have a force acting upwards. And this force propels the liquid metal inside the fountain up. It's the Lorentz force. It's the same force used in electric motors, for example, and many other appliances and technologies. The working principle is very simple and it's a really cool concept. As you have seen in the video, there are two major problems with this fountain. There are actually three, but I haven't told you the third one yet. The first problem is the power supply. It shuts off because it detects a short circuit and then turns on again, so we just have this intermittent fountain. And I will resolve this problem by either using a different power supply or by using resistors, so the resistance is high enough that the power supply does not detect a short circuit. The second one, and in my opinion the worst one, is the mineral oil inside the fountain and also that the metal oxidized a little bit. I think the oxidation is due to the oxygen and moisture inside the mineral oil, but either way I have to think of a good way to fill this. I know a good way, but I don't have the material here, or I simply don't have the space to uh, assemble everything. And the third one is that these electrodes here are too thin to run this fountain continuously. They get pretty hot after about 20 to 30 seconds. The only solution to that is to use thicker electrodes. The problem with that is that it's pretty challenging to seal thick metal electrodes inside glass. These ones here were already a challenge and I don't think it will be feasible, at least for me, to fuse in thicker electrodes. So I think that's just a problem I have to live with and I don't think anyone would let this fountain run for a longer period of time. So yeah. There will definitely be a third version of this fountain addressing all the problems because I'm not satisfied yet. And I really hope you liked today's video and thank you a lot for watching.